Hi, welcome on Stochastip. In this video, we are going to dive into some really interesting topics like moment generating function. We will also look at the characteristic function. Then we'll explore Gaussian vectors. And finally, we'll cover Martingales. First, let's talk about moment generating function or MGF. So here is the formula. It may seem complex at first. So let's break it down step by step to understand what's the point of it. To do that, we can look at the Taylor expansion of the exponential function. When we expand it, we get this. Then we can add t. Now, to match the MGF definition, we add the expectation. Now, why do we care about this? Here's the cool part. The MGF makes it really easy to calculate the moments of a random variable. The first moment is the expectation of x, also known as the mean. And the second moment is the expectation of x squared. For instance, by calculating the difference between the second moment and the square of the first moment, we get the variance. These moments tell us important information about the shape and behavior of the distribution. If we want to calculate the first moment, the mean, here's what we do. First, we take the first derivative of the MGF with respect to t. Then, we evaluate this derivative at t equals 0. This gives us the first moment, more commonly called the mean of x. Now, for the second moment, we take it a step further. We need to find the second derivative of the MGF. Then, we evaluate the second derivative at t equals 0. This gives us the second moment. So, by using the derivatives of the MGF, we can easily calculate the moments of our random variables. For the first moment, we use the first derivative, and for the second moment, we use the second derivative, and so on. Now, let's move on to the characteristic function. The characteristic function, or CF, is another tool that helps us understand the distribution of a random variable. Unlike the MGF, which uses the exponential function of tx, the characteristic function uses the complex exponential of i tx. The addition of the complex term i is crucial because, unlike the MGF, which may not exist for all value of t, the characteristic function always exists for any random variable. Also, we won't dive into all the details of it but note that the characteristic function is closely related to the Fourier transform. And that's it. Now you know what MGF and characteristic function are. And also, from now on, we will mainly focus on the characteristic function. Okay, so now let's look at the Gaussian random variable. By the way, Gaussian and normal mean the same thing, so you will hear me say both. A Gaussian random variable has two parameters, mu, which is the mean, and sigma square, which is the variance. This type of distribution has a distinctive bell shape, which you can see here. Now, let's define the characteristic function for Gaussian random variable. There is also a simpler version. If we have a standard normal random variable with a mean of 0 and a variance of 1, the characteristic function becomes much simpler. OK, now let's look at the proof. In the first line, we have the definition of the characteristic function. In the second line, we replace it with the integral version with the PDF. Then, we add the PDF for normal distribution. In the fourth line, we combine the two exponentials for simplicity. In the next couple of lines, things get a bit complex, as we try to recreate a recognizable a minus b squared formula. Then, we obtain the integral of a Gaussian function that simplifies to 1. Finally, we can expand and simplify the equation. Okay, so now that we have seen the characteristic function of a Gaussian random variable, let's move to the multidimensional case with random vectors. This time, instead of just taking a single x, we are going to consider multiple x from x1 to xn. We'll put them together into a vector. Each xi as its own distribution with means mu i and standard deviation sigma i, you can observe the mean that is a vector. However, this time the variance isn't just a single number. 
It's a matrix known as the variance covariance matrix denoted by sigma. What we can introduce now is the concept of a Gaussian vector. So imagine that we have a vector x that turns from x1 to xn. But what makes x a Gaussian vector? Basically, it's all about the dot product. If you take any vector u and do a dot product with x, the result should be a Gaussian random variable. All right, now let's move to the next property. This time, let's consider a vector x where each component, x1 to xn, is actually a Gaussian random variable. The idea is simple. If each xi is a Gaussian random variable, then the whole vector x is a Gaussian vector. So that's the key idea. Now let's prove it. First, we use the definition of the characteristic function. Then, we expand the dot product. Then, we use the property that the exponential of a sum is a product of the exponential. We then use the fact that each xk is independent. Because each xk is a Gaussian random variable, we can do this. Then, we use the reverse property that the product of the exponential is the exponential of the sum. And finally, we come back to the dot product notation. Okay, and now we can look at this property that kinda do the link between the characteristic function, the mean vector, and the variance covariance matrix. So the proof is very straightforward. We basically use the property of linearity of the expectation and the link between the variance and the covariance using the vector notation. To end this video, I would like to introduce the concept of a martingale. A simple example of the martingale property is to look at this process and stop it at a certain point. We can then simulate what comes next multiple times to see what happens. Then we can do the average. What you can notice is that if you know the price at time s, the values in the future will oscillate on average around the value at s. So what is really weird is that if you run the process after s for some time and then you stop it again, the mean given this additional information will be different from the mean that you had. And this is basically the idea of a martingale. The expected value of xt given the information available at time s is equal to the value of x at time s. Also, we can define sub-martingale and super-martingale. Sub-martingale is when the process on average increase, and super-martingale is when the process on average decrease. We can also do some simulation to visualize what is super and sub-martingale. And also, I would like to emphasize that, like in the previous video, I'm doing this animation using a very specific type of stochastic process, that is, burn in motion. So in theory, here, you could have jump or crazy stochastic process, but just to make it more visual, I use burn in motion. And that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you in the next one.